Nature publishes a second paper on an ancient Greek mystery, the Antikythera mechanism. This promises to revolutionize our understanding of the history of technology and astronomy, and it even tells us about the timetable for the earliest Olympic Games. The Antikythera mechanism would be remarkable even if it was a less clever thing than it is, because there is so little like it physically preserved or even described in ancient books. If it hadn't been discovered when it was in 1901, no one would possibly believe that it could exist because it's so sophisticated. It is, in a sense, you could describe it as being the technological side of the Greek miracle that created so much of our Western civilization. A friend of mine, uh, Mike Edmonds, came to me one day. Uh, he's a professor of astronomy at Cardiff University. And he said, have you ever heard of the Antikythera mechanism? Um, well, I said, no, I hadn't. You know, what is it? And he told me this extraordinary story. In 1900, just off the coast of the small island of Antikythera, a group of sponge divers came across the remains of an ancient wreck. The first diver to come to the surface said he'd found a heap of dead, naked people underwater. The second diver came up with a larger-than-life bronze arm. And what they'd in fact discovered was the wreck of a Roman merchant vessel stuffed full of Greek treasure. And all this treasure was taken to the National Archaeological Museum in Athens, including a small lump, just over 30 centimetres high, completely disregarded at the time. It lay in the museum for some months, according to accounts, and then it split apart. And when it split apart, a curator noticed the remnants of some small precision gear wheels. After the first half century of research, which led to some insights, but generally a lot of confusion, a British physicist in the mid-1950s started to study the mechanism. He was called Derek de Sola Price. Price was the first to study X-rays of some of the fragments made by Carolambus Caracalos. From these x-rays, Price developed a model of how the mechanism worked. It incorporated one feature, an ancient cycle of the sun and moon called the Metonic cycle, which was absolutely critical to later understanding. It's one of the basic keys for understanding how the mechanism works. He also identified in the mechanism some epicyclic gearing, that is to say gears that move with their axes moving on other gears a completely astonishing revelation for ancient Greece. Now the very latest techniques have been used to explore the mystery device. In the autumn of 2005, a team from Hewlett-Packard, led by Tom Maltzbender, came with a, a special mechanism for looking at the surfaces of all the fragments. With our method, we photograph uh, a surface like this stone surface here with a fixed camera, but light sources at multiple positions. And from this, we can certainly interactively change lighting conditions of the object on the computer to bring out more detail. But more importantly, what we can do is we can change the reflectance properties, the, the material, basically, of the object itself. We can now transform into a very metallic look. This is beautiful, Very good, yeah. We wanted 3D X-ray information at high resolution also. And a world-leading company called Xtech Systems came with a team led by Roger Hadland. They bought an eight-ton X-ray machine to Athens, so they produced brilliant data. We have absolutely extraordinary high-resolution data of all 82 fragments of the mechanism. And this has been really the basis of many of our revelations. The Antikythera mechanism was the ancestor of a whole range of medieval instruments and clocks. Don Unwin, a master instrument maker, has already made replicas of many devices, including the 14th century Wallingford clock. His latest ambition is to make a working version of the Antikythera machine. But all the gears, they're all squashed in and into quite a narrow, you know, like your yes. Richard of Wallingford's clock. He left plenty of space between yes, them, yeah. but in this... Well, I, I, yeah. I was surprised how little space how it little actually looked, yeah. took up 
once once you get to the main body of it, you'll see the gears coming yes, up in yes. slices, because you know we took an eight-ton X-ray machine to Athens to X-ray this tiny <laughs> little thing, you know, and we did it in 3D so we could get the three-dimensional information out of the object. Oh, this is you coming. Know? And you're just beginning to see now the crown. Big this was a, this was ex you see a the terrific advance. Coming. Was it not from from some of your earlier? Oh, that's lovely. You see, you can see the gears in layers. You can yeah. see exactly where they are and their relationship yeah. in three dimensions, which is what Price didn't have, of course. Of course, he no, could, no, he no. He couldn't no. see the three dimensional arrangement of the gears. That's the gear Price identified as 127 teeth. Yes. You know, for the Newtonic side, this is 223 teeth yes, for the Saros left of it, yeah. and so on. And that, those are the gears. That's the little pin and slot that uh, oh, Michael yes. Wright identified. Yeah. But let, let me show you oh, some, good. this oh. is a computer animation of the gears. <laughs> Lovely, isn't it? It's a beautiful thing, isn't yes. it? <laughs> it goes round very quickly, obviously, because otherwise you... Oh, you've got, you've got the moon work on the, there. Yes, that's, that's a little moon phase indicator that uh, Michael Wright uh, identified. Beautiful device. And here we've got it on the Wallingford clock. Very similar. Very similar, but over 1,400 years later. In fact, you can see it. If you look at the back of fragment C, that's the little ball there. Yes. Yeah. People had seen this for 100 years, yeah. and it took Michael Wright it's to, to, to resolve it. Yeah. He said, that's what it is. And yeah. it's the sort of thing <laughs> you think, yes, of course it is. You know? <laughs>